the seventh generation of Google's Pixel phone have been released. Let's see what's new on the inside and how repairable Google's Pixel 7 is. This year I've purchased two Pixel 7s, one in silver and the other in cream. I've skipped getting the Pro models as other than the extra camera and a slightly better screen, it's basically the same phone. Opening up the first box, you can see the packaging is very similar to last year's Pixel 6, including the lack of a charger or headphones, which is something seen from almost every phone company now. What they do still include is a USB-C to USB-A adapter to transfer all your files from your old phone or connect USB devices to the Pixel 7. With one phone out of the box, it's time for the other. I'll now get both phones configured and set up with a fingerprint and the new facial recognition feature. It'll be interesting to see later on where the replacement of any components will prevent the use of these features, like what's seen on Apple's phones. Both Google Pixel 7 phones are running Android 13 with the September 2022 security patch update. With both phones unboxed and ready to go, it's time we begin opening one up. I'll heat the front of the phone on a heat plate for several minutes before attempting to remove the display. This is the most daunting part of the teardown, just one wrong move with my plastic pick and I could damage the OLED. It's mounted on a thin plastic frame that we're trying to loosen. Along with adhesive, it's also fastened with several plastic clips. In fact, it's very similar to how the iPhone's display is attached. After one phone's open, it's time for the other. After heating, I noticed a small formation of condensation in the camera lens. This was the case with the other phone too. Having the display open first allows for fast and easy screen replacements, but with added risk when repairing anything else. Apple solved this on their iPhone 14 by having both sides of the phone open. A feature, however, only really useful for Apple's repair avenues as the software still prevents third-party repair. Taking our first look inside the Pixel 7, it's quite similar to its predecessor. Each phone company has a distinctive internal phone design and the Pixel is no different. With its large graphite sheets stuck over the battery to the large metal heatsink over the logic board. The first noticeable change is the lack of a screw used to hold the display's retaining bracket in place. This is a small step backwards in repairability. While you could call this a screwdriverless screen repair, it means one small slip with your spudger and you risk slicing the display's cable as the clip is firmly secured. But once I've worked the bracket free, I can unplug the display. This 1080p OLED display houses an underscreen fingerprint reader and a pass-through for the proximity sensor. At the top of the phone is a large rubber sheet and graphite sticker, both of which I'll need to take out. There's another at the bottom of the phone. Both of these supposedly help with thermals. I've purchased two devices for good reason. I'll first disassemble one device in its entirety before I then perform a part swap test. Using parts from the other phone, I'll be able to see if the software accepts the newly installed parts, and whether anything is restricted after repair. A test I've been performing on every flagship for the last few years. Last year, Google added the requirement of fingerprint calibration, but provided the tool to do so. Will they have added anything new this year? Maybe for the facial recognition? We'll have to see. But with the speaker and heatsink removed, we begin to see the logic board. But there's still plenty of things attached to it, such as the 10.8 megapixel front camera or the two rear cameras, consisting of a 12 megapixel ultra wide and the main 50 megapixel shooter. The 7 Pro has an additional 48 megapixel telephoto camera. Next to detach is the earpiece speaker and a flex cable for the rear flash and microphone. The last component blocking the removal of the logic board is, well, the battery. Google has really used every bit of space inside the phone, so much so that the controller board for the battery overlaps with the logic board, so it'll need to come out first. And that's Easier said than done. Unfortunately, the Pixel 7 hasn't introduced an easier way to remove the battery. The included pull tab 
proves useless even when alcohol is applied around the battery. It didn't even budge, just snapped my pick in two. So I had to step it up a notch. It was back to the heat plate where after a few minutes of heating the back panel, I could try once again. Out of all the phones I've taken apart this year, the Pixel battery has proven the most challenging to remove. But with the right amount of alcohol, plenty of heat and lots of prying, I was able to get it free. The Pixel 7 battery has a capacity of 4,355 milliamp hours. And with it out, we can finally free the logic board after its one screw is unfastened. What's left inside is the wireless charging coil, buttons, LED flash, and two microphones. As for the logic board, it's got the same dreaded soldered on USB-C port as the Pixel 6, along with a soldered on microphone and proximity sensor. With that, we've disassembled the Google Pixel 7. But we're not done yet. We still need to test the software side of repairability. Modular components are meaningless if the software has been programmed to reject the replacement parts. To test this properly, I'll remove the logic board from the cream phone and install it inside the silver one, meaning every part of that phone will be foreign, simulating the replacement of every part. I'll loosely attach everything back inside the phone so we can test out what happens. Last year, the Pixel 6 Pro displayed a fingerprint error. Will we get one for the facial recognition this time round on the Pixel 7? I'll put in two screws just to keep everything together and prevent the phone from falling apart when I pick it up. As the display connector is recessed, it takes a little bit to get it connected, but once it's attached, I can test out the phone. Powering the phone up, I'll need to first enter the passcode before I can test out the fingerprint reader. On the lock screen, you can see it's triggered a notification stating I cannot use the fingerprint sensor, but nothing about facial recognition as it continues to work perfectly fine. But just like last year with the Pixel 6, I get the enrollment was not completed message when trying to set up a fingerprint. Like the Pixel 6, the solution is the same. I'll need to put the phone into fast boot mode by holding the power and volume down buttons. Then after connecting it to a computer, I can visit pixelrepair.withgoogle.com and recalibrate the fingerprint sensor. You'll need to use Google Chrome as other Chromium based web browsers don't work. Once it's booted back up, you'll find the fingerprint still doesn't work. That is, until you restart the phone one more time, as the calibration tool states. After that, our replacement display works just like the original. As for the rest of the phone, I couldn't fault it. The cameras and associated modes, auto brightness, and display refresh rate work perfectly. So it's a pass for the Pixel 7. Sure, there's an extra recalibration step, but Google provides it to all end users through a web browser. And that's awesome. Now, all that's left to do is get these two phones back together with their original parts. Before installing the cameras, I'll use some air to blow out any dust from behind the lens. All screws inside the Pixel 7 have T4 Torx heads and appear to be of the same length. This is great if you lose track of screw placement or need a replacement screw. I won't be applying any new adhesive for the battery as the original adhesive will still be strong enough to keep it in place. Next, I'll secure the heatsink in place using its 9 screws. Then I can proceed to install the speaker and its 3 T4 screws. As this is a brand new model of phone, there isn't any replacement parts or adhesive available. If you're fixing a Google Pixel 7 yourself, I'd recommend installing new graphite sheets and display adhesive. 
Granted, you could get away with reusing the graphite sheets like I have here, but it just doesn't look the greatest. It's now come time to reattach the display. After its cable is plugged in, I'll attach the retaining bracket. You may also have to bend it back into shape to ensure it latches correctly. After I clean off the insides with a microfiber cloth, I can close up the display and latch it back into the frame. After reinstalling the SIM card tray, it's time to get the other phone reassembled. And just like that, we've now assembled the Cream Pixel 7. Upon swapping the parts back, I had to recalibrate the display again to bring back fingerprint functionality. And with that, we're done. So this is it, the Google Pixel 7. Google might not be going out of their way to make the most repairable phone, but at least they're not trying to prevent you from repairing it. It's great to see Google is still providing the necessary calibration tool to ensure your phone will work after repair. However, the Pixel 7 has the same drawbacks as the Pixel 6. A soldered on USB-C port and a battery that's way too difficult to remove. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing and check out the Teardown and Repair Assessment playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.